Live from CBS2 Election Headquarters, Chicago Decides. Welcome back to our live election coverage as Chicago decides the next mayor of the city. I'm Erica Sargent. And I'm Joe Donlin. The polls seem to indicate this would be close, and that's where we are right now with 81% of the vote in. Paul Vallis leading by just about 2,000 votes, roughly over Brandon Johnson at 741, just 19% of the votes still out. Yeah, and we're getting a look at some of the aldermanic races as well. The fourth ward on the south side that features State Representative Lamont Robinson against Prentice Butler with 78% of the votes in. Robinson stands at 67%, Butler at 33 all right, the next one we're going to look at is Ward 5. This is your old ward, uh, Alderman uh, Hairston, who's with us tonight. Uh, Desmond Yancey, who you endorsed in this yes. race, correct? Uh, up another tight race here, though, with 76% reporting in Ward 5. Now let's go to Ward 6. William Hall against Richard Wooten, 60%. Pretty dominant lead there as he stands at 59% of the votes in. Ward 10 now, Peter Chico against Anna Guajardo, 72% reporting here, and Peter Chico with a demanding, a commanding lead right now. Let's turn to the 21, 21, 21st ward here, Cornell Dantzler, Ronnie Mosley, very tight race if I can't quite do that math there, but <laughs> less than a, what, a less, less than 100, 50, yeah, right? yeah, between the two candidates as they stand. Next one up is Ward 29, Chris Taliaferro against C.B. Johnson. This one another. Look at that. That's one vote. Mm. Jeez, 66% reporting in Ward 29. Let's head over to the 30th Ward. Ruth Cruz, 52%. Jessica Gutierrez, not too far behind, but uh, a pretty wide lead compared to what we've seen in other races tonight, 48%. Right, Ward 43, Timmy Knutson and Brian Comer. Knutson with a lead right now, but it's tight. 91% reporting in that ward. Mm. All right, 82% reporting in the 46th ward in Angela K. A pretty substantial lead right now, but you can see even in this race, 6,000 to 5,000, if you look at how many people actually turned out to vote there. All right, and we're going to look at Ward 48 now. Lenny Mana Hoppenworth and Joe Dunn. That is uh, 51.49 with 85% reporting. Again, Ward 48. Now let's turn to the latest voter turnout numbers that are in 530,382 total ballots cast, 1,597,000. 910 registered voters in Chicago. That's about 33.2% of the total. That's the citywide turnout. So today's voter turnout actually just slightly higher than the turnout in the last municipal runoff election in 2019. Just more than 530,000 ballots cast today. Again, that's a 33.2% turnout, and it's a little better than it was for the runoff in 19, although the general in 19 was about 560,000, as I recall. The question we need to bring in with our analysts right now, I think, is the key question that we talked about briefly in the very beginning here tonight, and that is what's happening with the mail-in ballots. How many of them are still outstanding and, how, and, and haven't arrived yet? Perhaps it, it could, at this point, come down to those. It could very well. It, it could very well come down to those. Um, so but we may not have an answer tonight. Well, we, we're looking at these numbers. We just might not. Yeah. yeah. We just might not, and depending on what those numbers, how many are claim to be outstanding because some may be outstanding and people may just not send them back in too so you know they know that we mailed them out and that's the number that they're counting on but sometimes they don't get all of those numbers back yeah. so that could be less so some of those especially we were looking at some of those all dramatic races very tight just like we had for mayor they're 50 50 derek so as alderwoman harrison was saying you think some of these races we just won't have an answer for a while exactly and it's really hard to analyze because um, you don't know where the votes the outstanding votes uh, are you know you don't know whether they're in uh, uh, Vallis strongholds you don't know whether they're in uh, 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 they're in uh, Johnson. Uh, Brayton Johnson strongholds uh, so it, it, it becomes a guessing game I mean we really have to sit here and wait <laughs> until the votes are counted because there, there's no one's gotten an obvious lead at this point um, mm -hmm. so uh, and, and as Leslie said it could come down to the the late mail-ins which aren't going to be counted tonight yeah. So let's go back to the point about uh, the endorsements. I know that we were starting to, to we had to cut away for, for the TV update. But was there one that you, you didn't seem to think there was one that made a difference? 
Um, but there were a couple that seemed certainly important for Vallis in particular. Well, I thought the local endorsements meant more than the national endorsements. Mm. Uh, the people flying in from, you know, from wherever uh, don't really c cut much ice. Um, for that matter, I thought that uh, Chewy Garcia's endorsement of Brandon, right. uh, it was a boost for him mm -hmm. because it, it, it solidified the progressive base that, that he was trying to attract. Right. Not really a surprise, though, right? I mean, you would expect him to endorse Johnson, the more progressive candidate. You would expect it, but, you know, uh, until it happens, uh, yeah. it, it, doesn't, it didn't happen. I mean, so it, uh, it, it is a boost. Um, you know, uh, Chewy got the CTU's backing when he ran for mayor. Uh, he uh, dithered in, in announcing for mayor in this run. They decided to go with uh, Brandon Johnson instead. And um, look, you have to say from these results that it was a wise decision. Brandon Johnson ran an excellent campaign in the sense that he was very charismatic, very personable, um, uh, very energetic, mm -hmm. and uh, he energized um, his progressive base. Yeah, let me get one more on this, Erica, with, with the older woman, and that is Lori Lightfoot. Didn't endorse anyone. Well, that's exactly what I was about okay. to ask. <laughs> Are you surprised by that? And do you think that would have had an impact one way or the other? I, you know, I think that's that's the million dollar question there. Um, you know, she stayed out of it. She was not, you know, one of the top two. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, does it help the candidate or does it hurt the candidate? Mm. And so I think for her, the best thing to do was to stay out. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you've you had know, experience you with know. her being in City Hall. Do you think, what do you think her mindset was? If it Was she even wanting to endorse anyone considering well, I that think she Lori's lost out on the second term? parting gifts of her own. She started one, uh, I think, last week with the reorganization of the City Council right. Committee. Yes. That was mm -hmm. a parting gift. And um, so I, I think she's got, you know, more things to bestow <laughs> upon the incoming administration. Uh, and the other question is whether the candidates really wanted her endorsement. I mm -hmm. think Paul sure. Vallis might have, but might not. Uh, I don't think she, I, I, I couldn't see her endorsing Brandon Johnson because uh, of his of his uh, progressive politics. Well, she ran as a progressive. Yeah. I mean, and progressive was everything other. And then we find out that she's not as progressive. Well, as that's she what I meant. And, that, and she wound up, you know, caught in the middle so somewhere. That, no, between. that goes back to what I said about the, 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 the name four years ago was progressive. Right. The name now is Democrat. <laughs> and, and, and so you don't really know who these candidates really are. Because it's it's everywhere, and you're talking about the endorsements. Some of those endorsements, the aldermanic and uh, the other uh, mayoral uh, people, I was surprised by. I was surprised that they got behind a certain candidate. Which, I was, which ones are you talking I was, about? Uh, Jamal Green. Okay. I, you know, mm -hmm. you you seem to be pr progressive right. and forward thinking, and but yet you go the, the the total opposite. Right. So there were some that that are in the progressive cad candidate that went more conservative. So I found that very, very interesting. It was also interesting that the current aldermen, or the ones who gave up their, their wards to run, seemed to favor Vallis over what would have been, you'd consider, a Lightfoot or Johnson candidate, more progressive. Yeah. No, I, I, I think that they, they know. Well, no, I don't think, no, none of them were around because it's been 30 years since he's been... Um, in, in City Hall, Vallis. Okay, right. I have a question. I want to turn to ads, but before we do that, 87%, we have some new numbers coming in. Look at that. <laughs> Look how tight that is. Wow. 454 oh, on the end for Vallis and 84. So we are under, under what? Uh, under 400 yeah. separating these two candidates as we hit 87%, about 13% of that vote still outstanding. So if we continue to stay on the mayor here and talk about particularly the ads in the last few uh, days, even the last couple of weeks, Derek, what do you think worked strategy-wise when uh, we talk about, you said Brandon Johnson is very char charismatic. There were some ads that were, of course, ta attacking Paul Vallis, but there were some where he tried to showcase that in this unity, especially towards the end. What do you think worked for him and what do you think worked for Vallis? What worked uh, for Vallis certainly was public safety mm -hmm. um, more than anything else. And his ability to stay on message, which had not been a Paul Vallis strong suit uh, in his pre uh, previous uh, 
electoral campaigns. Mm -hmm. He got wonderful management from Joe Trippi, who's an experienced veteran Democratic operative who had worked at the highest level of Democratic politics. He had worked for presidential candidates, and he, he kept Vallis on message, and his uh, commercials were uh, excellent. Mm -hmm. They were really excellent. Uh, what worked for Brandon Johnson was, um, again, a message uh, that solidified his progressive base and which uh, tried to coalesce uh, the black community uh, it, behind him by demonizing Paul Vallis. And that, that, that worked for him. Alderwoman, especially since you've been at this game for decades and decades, what do you think, was there anything missing from their strategy when it came to reaching out to the vote through ads or otherwise? I. You know, thinking about it, I mean, I think the single word messaging works, right? So as Derek pointed out, crime, you know, you, you've got to do that. And every time you do that and you're thinking about, I can't carry my purse because I'm afraid of being carjacked and you can't, you're thinking I'm going to do something and he's going to bring all these cops. He never explained how he's going to do that. And, you know, even they're going to come out of retirement. There's right. going to, they're going to be marching back. I don't believe that for, it, or for a second. And some of them, we don't want to come back because they left under really bad circumstances. So, you know, there, there's a lot to be said for that. I think Brandon came across as, you know, very calm, very relatable, very relatable. Um, you know, he obviously doesn't have the experience that, that Vallis has in the different areas. And so I think when voters are thinking about it, they're thinking, well, maybe I might want somebody that knows a little more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, I think, I know he tried to bridge that coalition, but there's some people that, and especially, oh, you want somebody to make some decisions. You want somebody to govern. And so I think those were some of the things that, that they mm -hmm. talked about. It's not the, you know, kumbaya, all come, this, this is work, this is hard work. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting now that you bring it up. Um, what did you hear from either of these candidates as proposals or policy changes that having been in the chamber, you can say, look, we've tried that or that's just not going to work? Yeah. So there, there has been a lot of that, you know, and, and with the budget. And um, so I think Brandon Johnson's, um, approach in terms of, you know, promoting detectives. Not only do we have to deal with crime, but we have to solve crime. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things, and that's a really a big issue in the African-American communities. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our women go missing, our sons get killed, and nobody finds anything. And something happens to somebody on the north side, and, you know, seven hours later, it's been solved. So I think that addresses some of those issues in a different way that we've never heard before. We've never had, had any, any candidates talk about that. Um, I think you, you, you talk to Vallis or you listen to Vallis' messages about having uh, security or having, I'm sorry, police, because right now they have security and it's not CTA, working well. Right. So get Chicago police on public transportation. I think that's a great idea, but again, you've got to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like you give a job. These are union jobs, mm -hmm. you know, which, which are great go jobs, but there's bargaining there. And so you've got to find the money. What none of them really talked about was the city budget and the pension. Did, didn't hear that a lot from either one of them. And so while you're talking, we're going to build this and we're going to, with what money? And so nobody talked about cutting costs or being efficient. So I'll, I'll be interesting to see, it'll, it'll be interesting to see um, what happens. Well, here we are, just 55 minutes yeah. into uh, the, the results. Yes, yeah, since the polls closed and we still stand at 50% for both candidates here with just shy of 400 votes separating the two. And only 13% of the vote remaining out. <laughs> mm -hmm. so and we, you'll have an answer in 20 minutes. You think oh. so? It'll be 815. You're still sticking at to your 815. At confidence, there you go. <laughs> All right.